Alright guys, DJ, Guildmaster, Whispering Gamers Guild, uh, back with like a little bit of something different tutorial on how to paint uh, Desert Camouflage. From my previous video, you've seen these bimps, uh, so I went, and went ahead and primed them. I primed them with a Dark Desert uh, spray from Vallejo. I, didn't, I figured I didn't really need to show that in uh, the video, but I'm going to spray these guys, I've sprayed them. And I'm going to go into the painting of them. Uh, doing desert's pretty simple. I'm painting these guys like Republican Guard, which is basically a desert color camouflage. The difference is on the side of the hall, there will be like a bright or, or bright yellow uh, ID tag with like a number inside of it to designate that they belong to the Republican Guard. So that's what I'm doing for my Iraqis for uh, Oil War slash Team Yankee. And then I'll also use these guys as Soviets. Uh, again, I'm going to pull link in the description to go to, uh, Old Glory Miniatures. That's where these guys are, these bimps are from because of the shortage right now with, uh, Battlefront. Uh, they look really good. They're a very good company. Um, uh, they're local to us, so I like supporting local businesses. I basically call in an order. Uh, they set it up and then I just go pick it up at their facility. They're, they're, they're pretty cool. Uh, so what we're going to do, I'm going to go into, what I normally do is wash them first. Uh, so I'm going to actually start painting the tracks first. Uh, a lot of my information on how to paint tracks, I honestly, one of the best things that these guys put out Battlefront with Vallejo is Colors of War. Uh, they have World War II and, uh, Team Yankee. It's a great resource. I highly recommend it to anybody. It's worth, it's worth the purchase. What's nice is you can use it in other game systems like Bolt Action, uh, Command Decision, Chain of Command, just for painting tips. So I got my little painting area set up, my little paint palette, my uh, thing of water. I have a, dr a dry brush and a regular applying brush. My paints I'm going to use today with some some washes. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to set my camera up here. I'm going to use the, the phone so I can get actually closer and get some more detail for you guys. Unfortunately, the big camera, we're looking to buying another one, a little bit better of uh, zoom and uh, focusing. So I have to use my phone for this. Hopefully it turns out pretty good for you guys. Hopefully the audio quality is pretty good. Um, all right, guys, once I set up, we'll go into painting and we'll start talking about these. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and try. I took all the turrets off for this. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up painting... All around the tracks. Uh, I'll paint so far down on the sides and then around here. I feel like this very bottom's kind of wasted. As you see, I ain't really, really priming it too much. Uh, then you'll, I'll paint on top of the track right here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll paint a brown first. And normally what I would do for tracks, I would do a dry brush of black. Then a little bit of silver as well as some uh, rust colors. Uh, Soviet tracks tend not to all have a lot of rubber in them, including uh, bimps, so it's also mostly metal. So I'll probably do a brush of brown, and then once I do a, uh, I'll wash it with black, basically. That gives like an oiled, kind of like chapped up look. So I'm just going to go ahead and start painting these. Now granted, the roller wheels, there should be rubber on top of these. Uh, I've been in the military, I've seen sometimes these are be painted, just because they'll paint them from the factory. Other times, uh, because the paint getting chipped off just from wear and tear, the they're black. For this, I'm just going to leave them tan colored. And then what I'm going to do, uh, once I paint all these, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wash, basically. I'll wash the entire model. So I'll, I'll do a couple here on camera to you while I talk to you. I got my paint and stuff set off a little bit off to the side. I took the turrets off because there's really no reason to have them on. But all I'm doing is just uh, applying brown. Now you can get darker browns. I like using a lighter brown for this particular thing. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint so far. People have been seeing my uh, desert 
uh, camouflage on uh, Battlefront's uh, Facebook group. So I, I've figured I would do a tutorial. If you get some on the roller wheels, that's not a problem. No, it's, it's a little it looks a little bit different for me, simply because I'm not used to uh, painting this far out so the camera can see. But I'm trying to help just show you guys. Uh, another good resource for vehicle colors and stuff like that is actually Offspray. Uh, yeah, everyone's seen them if you're in historical war gaming or any sort of gaming. Honestly, they uh, they have a good resource. A lot of books, a lot of subjects. Uh, I I use them a lot. Like uh, for for this particular video, I actually um, pick them up and use them to uh, figure out the paint schemes. Hold up one second. Okay, I, I reposition the camera, may get a little better angle for everybody, and then I'm just basically going to paint the inside of the bottom of the track. Normally you'd paint the upper part up here. Uh, I'm not going to because there's really no track detail up there. Uh, the company that makes these Old Glory, uh, you see it in the other video, I'll put a link in the description of the other one. Uh, they do a good job. Like I said, they're local. Uh, I got all three. Well, I got, they sell them in boxes of three. And they, uh, they're like $27 American. And then you can get like a, another discount. So all we're doing is just painting the basic rough part of the track. Now you, as you can see there's some like still uh, lighter color paint in there. It's no problem. When we wash this, a lot of that will get colored in. And then I'll just move on to the next track basically. And I'll pr repeat this process for everybody. And then what I'll do is uh, I'm a lazy painter. So what I like doing is using a little washes. So, I will wash the tracks first before I do the whole model, and then I'll wash the entire model. Uh, I'll probably use a Dublin uh, mud wash. Uh, as much as I don't like using GW paint, you know, you see a bunch of it on my table here. I've had a lot of GW paint over the years. I've done a lot of GW models. But uh, their washes, I think, are pretty primo, and I'll use their null oil and uh, Dublin mud quite a bit. I also like using inks, and I'll show that later in the video whenever I get around the exhausts. A, a lot of times, these will be discolored from like oil, stuff like that. So, yeah, we're just we're just painting stuff up. Uh, some of the tracks will be a little bit distorted, but that's all right. Um, I like using rattle can to spray, and again, like I'm a lazy painter, so. The main color of this is going to be that desert tan. So guess what I did? I just spray painted it desert. I use that desert tan as the main rattle can. Eventually, I'm going to get into uh, painting with airbrushes. But um, I'm going to vacation origins here. I'm going to try to go to the store con actually to go to um, Team Yankee event or Flames event. I primarily play more. Uh, one focus camera i primarily play a lot more um team yankee as you guys probably noticed that seems to be more popular with the group out here in my local area which i mean it's not that's not too awful bad at least we're playing the game you know what i mean and then a little bit around the track back around the back idler wheel fun fact the soviet engine in the bimp is actually in the front that's why you're drive wheels in the front your toothed wheel uh it's an interesting concept because there's pluses and cons i'm sure you've seen the cheapton's videos about this uh forward back stuff like that so basically once that's kind of painted i'll go ahead and put that off to the side and um you set down up doesn't really matter and you just pick up another one and that's literally all you do so i'm gonna go ahead and I'll paint one more and talk to you guys, and then uh, off camera I'll finish painting them, and then I'll go into washing, and we will we'll see what happens. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them in there. Um, I know I'm not the best 
painter. I guess I like to call myself a um, functional painter. Oh, look at that. I'm painting it off screen. I'm a functional painter. So my stuff will look decent, um, I feel, on tabletop. I'm not going to win any awards. But I do like having a good looking army on the table. It's just, it's more immersive at that point. Uh, we're probably going to have some more Team Yankee videos coming up. Some old glory. Um, not old glory, but uh, bold action. It's one of the other games that we're getting fired off around here. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with, the, with content. I mean, all you guys can probably see. These uh, models are pretty decent. There's a little bit of bow in this track, and that's really for me whenever I, I put the track on. But, uh, yeah, I'm just up here in my painting little area. Yeah, this damn thing needs to not um, keep auto-focusing for you guys. I'm sure someone's going to be like, what in the heck happened? Doesn't help on moving the model around a lot either. So there's that one side, and then I just boom flip to the other. And just paint. Because what you want to do is um, a secret for painting rubber too in tracks is to paint a brown first, and then paint it black. Uh, it gives like a dirty. A dirtier color kind of breaks it up a little bit soften i guess the word would be softens the black makes it more like a grayish color i'm only doing this because even in the desert uh your tracks would get dusty they're gonna get dirty stuff like that so them being a different discolor different colors not all that uncommon now i have actually been inside of a bimp one uh when we were overseas the second time uh IA and the IP had them. There was a lot of room inside of a BIMP one. I'm sure a lot of people who have been in BIMPs on the Soviet service or a lot of the other uh, comm block countries will tell you there's not a lot of room. A lot of my Russian friends I know, they're all big people. They're not little by any stretch of the imagination. I'm thinking, how in the heck are they cramming 10 of you guys in the back of there? It reminds you of the hellhole and the Bradley like. There is not room for much of anything inside there. But, all right, yeah, that's basically it. And then what will happen is, like, these here, I'm not too worried about that little bit of a splash if I, if I want to. That's why I kind of used um, these guys as spray, because I already have the dark sand color. So I'll be able to fix that up that matches. That's something you want to try to do if you are being lazy and you're using a rattle can. Obviously, it's way easier when you use uh, daggone uh, airbrushes, but have the same color you can just hand paint on. So, you can, if you really wanted to cover these up, which I probably end up with touching them up, but since we're washing the whole thing with a uh, not chestnut but a Devlin mud, it'll help a lot. Now, what we'll do, we'll do select washing. So, what that'll be is we'll wash the entire model. And I'll make sure I don't wash inside of the exhaust, near the exhaust, in the uh, air intakes. This is where I'm going to end up uh, actually inking the model, let it dry, and then do a very light dry brush of silver to bring out the race texturing. And then if I was doing other washes, and since I'm washing the tracks with no oil, obviously I won't wash them, or I'll, I'll try not to get as much wash on them as I do the rest of the tank. Or the, the APC. So I'm going to go ahead and knock out the rest of these. And when I come back, I'll be talking about how to wash them. Okay, we're back now. Uh, when you're going to do... So now that I've let those dry a little bit, as you can see. I also went and I washed uh, the turrets. They're really not necessary right now, so I washed them. I put my wash on a little heavy on purpose. And then I do a dry brush. Like I said, I'm a lazy painter. So the I want to guarantee that there's some sort of shading in there, which is like from dirt and grime and stuff. Because obviously these being Iraqis, even, even uh, 
coalition vehicles for the most part, you're going to have like maintenance and stuff, especially when you're out in the field and stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash the tracks. You have to make sure the paint's dry first. I'm going to use some uh, no oil, basically like towel in a can or towel in a little jug. Um, yeah, hopefully I don't spill this on camera. That'd be hilarious. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wet my brush a little bit. I have an uh, applicator brush just for washing. And then literally... I'm just going to wash, just wash the model with my hand out of the way. And you just wash. Now in some ways, if you just dry brush your track uh, with the brown, uh, it'll leave a lighter, a lighter dry brush or It'll leave a, a lighter, somewhat darker track. And touch the outside of it. Okay. Get a better angle. And really just wash this. And all you're doing is just washing. Touch up on the edges. That's literally it, guys. You let that dry. Some better light here. Let that dry. And then when you do a light dry brush of silver or another brown or whatnot, it'll really pop. So let me get, I'll do a couple more here for you. Uh, whenever I do, whenever I do actually start washing, what I will do, I'll let the wash sit for. Oh, um, I'll let it sit for a while, at least several hours to fully dry, because wash pretty much goes on fairly wet, with that focus, oh, come on, there you go, so you can see what I'm doing, this is really hard for me to try to paint without looking at my camera screen, and keep it um in focus for you guys which we're getting we'll get we'll get through this and that's it so now i will just set it straight down to dry You can already kind of see a little bit of a difference already. Okay, I'll let that dry. And then when you do your dry brushing, it'll really make it, it'll really bring it out. So, let's do another one, see if I can get a better focus. Oh, come on, camera. Oh, it's 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 focus closed. Okay. Yeah, I, I tried once uh, doing a practice one of these for you guys. Uh looking through my camera and I was like huh this doesn't work for me and you put it on fairly thick fairly light all well, depends what you want to do I like putting it fairly decent on there like I said you're just you're giving that splash of that washing of color and what it ends up doing is, guys, it gives them like an oiled up, um, I guess a lubricated feel. Okay. Looks pretty good. Now some folks will do muds and washes and stuff. I have yet to try any of them muds like the weathering powders that way i would like to i think i'm going to whenever i do some um vehicles for bolt action which i'm going to try to do on the channel i'm not the best painter but um hey i'm trying to make content for you guys and maybe 
share some tricks with newer viewers or even some older viewers that maybe have not seen that trick before or something like that. Because a lot of my t painting, I guess, know-how comes from GW, painting other games, um, watching other YouTubers, stuff like that. And let me tell you what I am... Like I said, I'm more of a uh, practical painter. I just want to get stuff done and get it on the table. I used to be one of them guys that play all plastic and gray for a long time and piecemeal out cleaning and stuff like that of miniatures. And then one day I was like, you know what? I am never again going to feel just a anything gray. Unless I really, really, really have a boner to try it. You know what I mean? Wash my paint, brush her off, have a little rag, and then I'll do one more on the camera for you guys. And then the other ones I'll do off, and then I'll have to let these dry for a while. So, one thing I've realized doing these videos is the challenge of I can't record the whole way through, I gotta do so much um, in a day. Yeah, I just looked down at the camera and I realized, oh, you can't really see the area I'm working on. Great job. So we're, we're getting better at it. It's kind of weird because um, I had the camera literally in front of me. And I'm painting over top of the camera and still looking down at the camera to see if it's still in focus. I don't know how the other guys can do it. It's probably one of the reasons why I don't do too many um, painting tips or painting videos. Now, one thing um, you guys will probably see with some of these miniatures, you can definitely see more uh, detail with the paint on now. I've gotten all the mold lines off, but like I said, that's one thing inherently with pewter. You will see more detail mold lines or, um, I guess, I wouldn't say pocking, but like uh, not totally smooth surfaces. And I'll be honest, I don't mind that. To me, it just makes the model more richer, especially when it comes to paint. You know what I mean? But I'm going to leave a description below this video to Old Glory. Um, yeah. So, literally, I'll let this dry. And once it's dry... Uh, I'll take like a silver or a very like a, a lead belcher or a leadened, you know, I mean, not a real bright silver. Do very sporadic dry brushing amongst it. And then when that dries, I'll take a uh, bright orange from GW. It's there. Um, it's this one here. It's, uh, no, that's edging. It is literally rust. Here it is. It's a uh, rasin rust. Uh, it's like a dry brush. Uh, you do that. Uh, one thing you'll find working with metal and stuff, and especially in real life, when it whenever it gets bared, metal gets bared, like um, uh, you know, paint rubs off, whatever. Uh, it's bright, it's bright silver. Well, being exposed to um, atmosphere or water or dew, it immediately a lot of times it will get a bright orange rust on it, like a surface rust. Which doesn't do anything. Well, tracks are the same way. And since a lot, especially Soviet tracks, um, up until I think uh, later in the 90s, uh, were primarily metal, especially like block countries, Middle Eastern countries, stuff like that. So the fact that there'd be more bare metal for it to rust, to me, makes a lot more sense. Okay, I hope you guys like this. I'm going to paint the rest of these up off camera. My other camera, I don't have it set up to where you guys can do is, uh, watch me do a speed run. But, uh, alright guys, I hope you're liking the video so far. Uh, we'll come back and we'll finish these tracks up when they're dry. Then we'll go into washing the entire model. Peace. Alright, so I'm going to start washing this. I got my earth jet mud. Which I'm going to get some more of. Get my paintbrush. Wet it. 
All right. I dropped them all. All right, we're going to start painting. We're washing. So you just want to put it on fairly decent. The whole purpose is just to give color. And a lot of times this will just darken it down. And you're just literally accenting details. That's all you're trying to do. I love washes. I've um, it's really enhanced my model painting. As you can see, like it just boom fills that in. This here, I'm not too worried about because I got a th that's going to be a different color detail. Okay, so then I'll just move to the back. And it's literally just a little bit of wash. If it goes on a little bit thicker, that's fine. All I'm doing is just washing the model. And just hitting up like the details. You see how it fills in the tracks here and here? That's what you want. You just want that. Before I go too deep, let's get the top of this guy washed. Well, it's not too bad. Well, and I'm just literally just washing a coat. You know what I mean? It'll it'll pan itself out in the end. So we'll hit all this stuff up. Now you see, there's a shovel there. What I'll do is I'll paint that when it's all said and done. Try not to get inside there. Remember I said we're going to wash that. And you're just, like you see, you can just bring it, you're just bringing out a little bit extra detail in the miniature. That's all you're doing. Sorry folks, I'm trying to paint looking over the camera and at the same time get the shot once I get a better little camera rig you can just see boom okay well, luckily we just have the front which is all really no much detail which even on the regular, the real bump, there's not much. You can see we're just bringing out all that detail. Just putting lines. Oh, that looks good. Now because, now grand on these guys, those lines are very shallow. And then whenever, obviously you paint the model... Like when you primer it or you hand primer it or whatever. Uh, they even get shallow work because it's full with paint. Now granted whenever you use airbrush. Airbrush isn't nearly as bad. For some reason you get really thin airbrush coats. Rattle can you can too but it takes a little bit of practice. And it takes from the temperature of the can. Oh yeah. Okay. And then, literally, other side looks good. I'll throw some extra wash right there. And then I'll very gingerly, with my other hand, get out of the corners and place it on my painting workbench to dry. There we go. We'll let that dry. I'm going to do the rest of these. And then I'll show you what they look like uh, done. And then obviously when they dry, um, we'll do a very light dry brush. See, I missed right there. I'll do a very light dry brush. All right, guys, we'll be back. Um, 
you can see, I just took one real quick and I threw a light dry brush on it. Uh, you can kind of see. Doesn't look doesn't look too much. Also, you boiled in packs. I don't know the turret. You know what I mean? It looks like it looks just looks dusty. Now putting side by side though with another one who hasn't been washed yet. Maybe a little bit harder to see, but you know see the the little bit of a lighter color. You know, it just brings out just a little bit more of a lighter color. On all of these, so this is this in here has been dry brushed. This one has not. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and start dry brushing. So what I like to do is I'll take a water bristle brush, a little bit wider. I'll just literally apply a little bit of paint, wipe it off on a rag or on my thumb. And then just literally just go into the model. Not a particular idea, but I'll start with the tracks first. And I literally just lightly dry brush. And I'll do some on the side. The whole idea is you're not getting the paint in, into the crevices. You're just hitting the raised edges. You know what I mean? It gives you that little bit of a depth. So I'll put... Very, you can see I'm putting very little paint on the model. Just enough to like hit the panels. Might not be a, too apparent here. And all, and all we're doing is just giving a little bit of that illusion of depth. You see, you see some of the stuff. It's kind of hard to see. I have a light right above me for painting, so it's easy for me to paint. But apparently, it's playing hell with the camera. But you see how the bottom is like uh, the tracks a little bit dirtier. I kind of want that. You know what I mean? Everything else is like kind of dry brushed. So if you see the back of here, okay, and I'm using again uh, darkened sand. So literally. You can really see me just adding a little bit of color. I'm trying to get too much on the tracks, only because I want that to different wash. And I'll and I will dry brush them my last color, but you see just a little bit of colors added. Okay, you see how this side here looks. Now one thing you want to wash is not get too much paint on your dry brush. You know, some areas are going to be more raised than others. So if you see here, now obviously you can see a lot of that there is actually for me, that's epoxy. It's not a dig on the model, that's me being a little bit careless. Uh, and other models you'll see, but you see, you just do a little dry brush, and it brings out like the cog and everything. And I did enough of it to where I still didn't really hit this other track. So it looks too awful different. Uh, literally all you're doing. You're just hitting it. And then it leaves the top left. A little bit of paint. I'll hit this front fairly heavily. Only because um, I'm looking for... I'm looking for um, more of a dusty color. Plus two, it's, it's the biggest, flattest part of the model. There's way much going on here. So it can be a little bit dusty from the road. From operations. So now we just go to the top. Now as you can see like how the light colors are. When you get to the top it's all kind of darker. So I'll take some paint. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this ridge. You see how I'm applying. You have to go at least one way. So I got all that higher things are hit, and you can just see me hitting the ridge. I'll hit around the turret hatches, and it's just lightly hitting it. Other stuff I'm going to stay away from, like I'll hit this, vision ports, 
Vision Ports is kind of weird. Hitting the top of it will give a little bit of color. And then around this, all I'm doing is just hitting them raised edges. See how I'm leaving a little bit of color on top of? Might be a little bit harder to see. And literally, might not be totally apparent, but one, this one's a little bit darker than this one. This is all we're doing. And then what I'll do eventually, you'll see later in the video, I'll put a little bit of silver accents around these. Because obviously where hatches are opening, closing, paint's going to be chipping, stuff like that. Comes with military vehicles. So then this, I'll just kind of, I'll hit it a little bit harder than I normally would. And, and the whole reason I'm even hitting it is just, you may see a little bit more. I just want to get that look, a dry brush look. Now granted, I have, I have a thinner paint or thinner glue, so you won't be able to see a lot of this stuff. Like the extra, but you can see it kind of definitely lightens up the turrets. Maybe not, it might be, it's, it's a little more subtle than what probably you can see on camera. And yeah, you really just do that. Okay, because the last part we're going to do, we're going to paint our vision things, colors, but our Sagar missile is going to be a, a, a dark green. It's going to be a good contrast color to the rest of the models. So I'm going to go ahead. I have four more of these to paint. I'm going to go ahead and do these real quick. Then I'll show you what they look like dry brushed. And then I'll go more into adding of the other colors and stuff like that. All right, guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do, take the turret off. So basically, I'm going to go ahead now you see some of this is popping off until I seal the model, but it's all right. I don't, I don't mind. It'll it gives a little bit more detail. So I'll do a light dry brush of silver along these. You can really see now how that lighter colored dry brush turned out. It really brings out some uh, the modeling and stuff like the linings of the pieces. But then I'll do those, and then I will do a light dry brush of. So I'm going to use lead belcher for the silver. Uh, I, I, I like GW metallics for the most part. Uh, and then I'll use uh, their dry for rust. So, you know, I'll be honest, I'll use a, I'll use a regular, uh, one of my older messed up brushes for that. Oh, wow, that looks really horrible, doesn't it? If it focus, holy moly. So, we're going to do the silver first. And I, I've already kind of shaken this up beforehand. A lot of other companies make a lot of other silvers and stuff. I like, I don't like really bright. I, I do like these, um, the, I guess it would be a, the dollar silvers, I should say. It doesn't, you don't need much, really. So, okay. And so what I'll do, for like, especially these guys, I'll take and I'll wipe a couple strokes inside. And then I'll just do this. I very sporadically hit it. Okay, and you're just leaving... A little bit of color. Sorry, I have to get back to my paint pot. It's kind of it's kind of weird. Um, doing this. Oh, sorry. So you can see, it's a little bit of silver on it. And it's not. We're not doing awful lot. It looks it looks a lot more on camera than what what it is. And then. I'll just do a little couple little very light strokes of it. And I even hit these a little bit, the idler wheel a little bit. You can see just a little bit extra detail. Okay. Now normally I would hit everybody with 
this color already on my brush. But since I'm kind of showing you guys the steps, oh yeah, it's looking really good. Since I'm kind of showing you the steps, put him down, take my brush, clean it up. One thing you want to do when you're painting, especially with metallics, change your water or have two different waters, one for metallic, one for not. So what ends up happening is when you rinse off your brush, you know, using metallic paints like golds and mostly silvers and stuff like that, You'll leave like a metal flacking behind, basically. And all that does is, um, this stuff. You see, it's real dry. It, it ends up leaving like metal flakings behind in your paint. So now, this dry, GW dry, you just dip it in. Okay. So I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll do that, get most of that off. And then, literally just spot hit ever so slightly and you might not be able to even see it on camera I'm just basically mostly hitting it where the new metal is where I just painted the new metal and that's the rep and that's to like simulate exposed metal uh, oxidizing and just real if I want a little bit more, I'll hit some places. Like right here. It looks a little rusty now. You just barely hit it up. So let's get this side here. You see I'm leaving that little bit of rust. A little bit around the cog idler. So maybe like the paint's chipped out. And now you see metal uh, I like this stuff although it is it is very dry so I'd say I want to add like a boop boop like say I want to really throw down the rust oh yeah like there's really it says like really heavy rust or I can do this by the hinges maybe maybe there's some rust on the hinges there Okay, and that, and that could be any number of reasons. You honestly, I put it on kind of heavy just for you guys to kind of see. In reality, lighter the better, in a lot of ways because it gives that little bit of a subtlety. Oh well, it looks really good. I think. All right. Ah, uh, so the tracks are done now, basically. So I'm gonna do that for all these guys. Um. When I get back, and I'll be able to take, like, further away pictures, you can definitely see the difference it makes. So, normally I do the silver first, then the rust. So, I'm going to have to go through, clean my brush off, and then do all the silver, and then do the rust. And then, I probably should do the silver and do a little bit of highlighting of little areas, like I talked about, like around the hatches and stuff like that. But, uh, we'll wait. I, I probably will leave some silver on, and you will see, to go ahead and I'll paint uh, the air intakes. And this is the exhaust, this whole area right here. So I'll do, I'll light brush this all silver. And then, one of the last stages for the model, I will ink these black. And it usually gives like a really, I feel... A greasy black if you know what I mean like it looks it looks wet almost which you kind of want in a way uh, it just gives you that extra little bit of color definition all right so we'll be back here in a few minutes guys let me go ahead and I'll start doing these tracks and we'll be back all right so I got all these uh, track areas dry brush silver then and then uh my rust orange and then i also took liberty of painting around the silver on the air intakes and exhaust so now one of the last detailed parts we're going to do uh we're going to do the all the optics there's a lot on here so let me go ahead and set my camera up so what we're going to do um 
we're going to end up painting literally all these little glass visors, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do a couple colors for that. I'm going to show you. Uh, first, we're going to go ahead and hit it with uh, this darker blue, this McCrag blue from Citadel. Then, halfway up, or we'll just lightly hit it with Thousand Sun, so it's a lighter blue. And then the very top of the vision ports on the, on the square part of it, we'll do just a touch of white. And I just have some basic D&D uh, &D white. So, let's go ahead and... Uh, Granted, they're really, really small, so I might not be able to get all of them. I might only be able to use the Thousand Suns white, I think, or the Thousand Suns blue, because there's a lighter blue color than the McCrag. And we kind of want it to stand out a little bit. Now, granted, any any of the blues are going to stand out. We'll do the turret first. Okay, so... Put my paint here. Uh, literally, this is like the main vision slit for the camera. And you just put a little bit of color on it. A little bit. Oop, I think you see. A little bit of color. And in your vision slits, you're just doing a little touch of color. You're trying not to get on top of the vision slit. You're just trying to get the front of it where the actual glass is. Well, this is really hard with the camera in the way. See, I'm just giving a little bit of flashes of color. And then there's one in the back here. You want to try to get it. And you're going to have to dip and keep your brush um, fairly sharp to get the full detail. Uh, if you do touch the model, try to get it off. There's one right here. I probably won't be able to get to it. That's not a problem. You won't be able to see it. So that's the first color that I'll do on all those. Put that to the side, and I'll actually take... And I'll start in the back. So there's one right here. Get my paint. Just literally just like that. And all you're doing is just hitting it. I might be able to do two tones on this after all, or three tones. I'm not going to try it though. And that's all you're doing. There from the top, you'll have a little bit of splash over, but that's not a problem. Now, Grant, you're going to be painting 20 or 30 of these things. So, like, it's going to be a little bit. So, but if you look, and if you look from the side, so let's do the, there's four on this side as well. Keep my paint wet. Let's go ahead and go towards the front. And you're literally just splotching some color down. Oop. Get my thumb out of the way. Can you see that? You're just doing some color. Now the, the one in front of it's gonna be kind of rougher. Focus. So you're just getting Just a little bit of color. What you're going to find is... Oh yeah, it looks pretty decent. You look on top, there's a little bit, but it's, it's not as big as a deal. Now, if I was submitting a squad of guys for a painting comp... Oh, absolutely. But I'm just getting guys ready for the tabletop. Is all I'm doing. Another one. And when you get good at this, you'll just boom, boom, boom. Now, it's a little bit sloppier. So, I'll take, like, whatever I'm done, I'll just take, like, a little splash of the white. Not too bad. 
So then, when you look at the model, you might not be able to see it too well. You can barely see color, you know what I mean, from the tabletop. And then when you look sideways, you see all that. It's a real subtleties that I feel make your models more detailed. So, I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush off real quick. Again, I'm only, I normally I'd paint everybody the vision slits, but I'm just trying to show you some of the stuff I do. Okay. A little bit of white. Uh, it's hard getting good whites. Uh, I like a lot of Vallejo white. I found this D&D &D paint set uh, someone had given to me. And uh, the white in it's really good. I like using it. So you just take your white. Just barely on the brush. You're just. You're just touching the top. That's all you're doing. Now green I got some on the very top. But you see I'm just barely touching. I get my tip sharp and my paintbrush. And you're just you're just kind of coaxing it like these. You're just barely touching it. Some ways you're just touching it a little bit. Like this guy, we'll go touch the top. Over here, we'll just touch the top. You're just adding a little bit of a glare to your your mirrors. Now, if I would have another one, it would be a darker mid and light. But that looks really good, I think. Let's hit the bimp so you guys can see. And really, you 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 want a little bit of paint on your paintbrush, but you want a real sharp tip. Uh, okay, so just, boop, very barely, you can see, yeah, you just want to barely touch it in some ways, some ways it's good having kind of runny paint. All you're doing is just barely touching the top, leaving that line. That's all you're doing. And you just do the same thing on all the morals. And you see, it'll, it'll be laid on top, which won't be too bad, but it kind of helps with this. And it, it gives you a little bit of a light reflection. Now, some ways you don't have to do that, you know what I mean? But it gives you a little bit of extra detail. And what I'll go do, I'll go back on top. I'll take the tan, and I'll just hit the back side, so it'll be just a sliver of color. So if you look at the model now... From the front, you get that light reflection, which works out really well, I think. And really, that's about it. It gives you a little splash of color. I still have yet to, I'm going to use this. I'm going to paint the big yellow uh, symbol for the uh, Republican Guard unit. It's like a big yellow square here and here. But yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Now, see, like it looks white on top. I'll take a tan and I'll just barely hit it and yeah that'll look good paint the barrel black then one of the final steps will be the Sager missile I will end up painting it like a uh, Soviet camouflage green all right I'm gonna go ahead and knock all those out and whenever I come back I show you what it looks like guys I mean I don't think you really need to see me paint the Sager missile green but then I'll show you how I seal the models, or what I use to seal with, and then what they look like before and after sealed, because 
The seal I use helps dull down the model even more. And I also have to wash this or uh, ink this. But once you wash them, once you seal the model, it dulls it down even more and it gives you that real flat, almost, um, I almost feel dusty color. All right, guys, we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I went and I sprayed one down. This is the one that's unsprayed, unsealed. This one is. You can't really see it, below, but you can see how like it's definitely a lot flatter. It's not as shiny in some locations on the model. It just really dulls down the model. Gets rid of all that shininess compared to this guy. Okay, so... Now, all this also with the Sager missiles painted. I have the the uh, Rocky or Rocky Guard. Uh, they had like a big yellow square or a dot paint on the side with uh, Arabic numbers. I just put some squiggly lines in there. I'm not. I forget how to uh, read Arabic uh, mass symbols. I used to be able to. I forget now. But what I did for seal this model, help it from chipping and stuff like that. I end up using. Uh, Tell me your color. Uh, it's a smaller can. Uh, you spray it on there. It really dulls down the model. Uh, I like using it a lot. The only thing I really have to do now for the rest of these guys is spray them down. In the last two command bimps, I have to put the crew in, coming out of the hatch. And then honestly, guys, these guys are done. These six are done. Uh, yeah, it doesn't take very long. And what's kind of nice about the way I do it, they definitely look pretty, I, I say decent, especially on the table. They're functional. Uh, I don't have a lot of weathering powders and stuff that I could definitely use. But, uh, yeah, it's down and simple. Now, granted, this video, it looks like it's taken a very long time. Nor, no, most of it's causing me talking and explaining stuff. But I usually just do this stuff and knock them out quick. Like, what I'm going to do next is after I'm done with these six, I have six T-72s to do. Uh, then once those two are done, or those six are done, I have six more bimps. And I just, I'm just i just going to bounce back and forth. And I have some other units uh, for the Iraqis as well. I have some carnations, stuff like that. But those will be later. Those are like, once you do one set, you're done. I have like 25 T-72s and 20 uh, bimps, roughly, to do. So there's quite a few. Uh all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll show you what the final product looks like with the crew inside of there. And that'll be that for this video. I uh, hope, you, hope you enjoy it. And uh, any questions or comments, just go ahead and put a link below. I'm going to put a link to Old Glory Miniatures uh, as well, where I got these guys from. As you can see, they're pretty functional. They're not, they're not too awful bad. Uh, I, I do like the models. They're a local company. Uh... Any detail lost on the one sides was mostly because of me with using epoxy. But other than that, guys, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. And uh, until next time. Oh, until next time. And that's the last guys. So I have them. And oh, this inside there. A little bit. Uh, they're not the best looking guys, but they're they're functional wash that guy a little bit but yeah it's that's the bimps i'd wait for these guys to dry then i'll uh go ahead and seal them the other ones are sealing uh yeah hope you guys like it and uh may all your projects turn out well all right guys we'll see you